So I just want to talk briefly for a second about, about some concepts that revolve around pressure and volume, okay? Because as we're working our way into the discussion of the cardiac cycle, you have to understand what happens here when, when you see pressure changes and volume changes, okay? Now, what I have written on the board here is that pressure and volume have an inverse relationship, okay? They have an inverse relationship. So basically, in a, in a nutshell, what I'm saying by that is that as one of these rise, the other will fall, okay? So as one rises, the other falls. That's what I mean by an inverse relationship, okay? So basically, as pressure rises, that will cause volume to fall. That will cause volume to drop, okay? So let's use a syringe as an example. So let's say you've got a little jar. Okay, and then in that jar, you've got your medication, whatever it may be. All right, and then you've got your syringe. All right, you place the needle in the medication, and then you start with the plunger down. Okay, you start with the plunger down, so the plunger is way down here. Okay, so basically what's going on here is that there is a very low volume and there's a high amount of pressure in here. All right, so then what you do if you want to fill the syringe, you, you grab the plunger and you pull it upward and then what that'll cause, that'll cause the plunger to move up and then as the plunger moves upward, okay, you will create a negative vacuum and you'll draw the medication, you'll draw the fluid out of there, out of the jar, okay. So basically what you just did is you decreased, is you, is you increased volume and as a result you decreased the amount of pressure in there, okay. So then what you'll do is, is then you'll take this syringe. Okay, you'll take the syringe that's filled with the medication. So we'll put our plunger up here, and then we'll put our med in here. I don't know. I don't know what medication. Let's just say insulin for the sake of discussion. Okay. And then you'll place the needle in the body tissue somewhere. And then what you'll do is, is you'll take your thumb and you'll press down on the plunger. Okay. And then what will happen is as the as you start to push the plunger downward you start to decrease the volume inside that syringe all right you decrease the volume inside that syringe so basically if i were to just plug if i were to just plug the end of the syringe as you decrease the volume what's going to happen is you know the the the, the, the liquid medication here is going to try to disperse because you're you're there's not enough room for it in there and it's going to have to go somewhere so it's going to be pressing along the walls of the syringe and then now, as you know, the opening of these needles or these these needles have an opening on the end. So as you decrease the volume and the pressure goes up, that will drive the flow of this medication out of the needle and into the person. Okay, and then that's how you you know inject the medication out of the person and or I'm sorry, out of the syringe and into the person. Okay, and the same thing happens in the heart. Okay, when you have you know, when the heart squeezes, okay, when the ventricles squeeze, okay, you're decreasing their volume. And as a result, you're increasing the pressure, okay? You're increasing the pressure within those chambers. And when you're doing that, that's driving blood flow, okay? That increased pressure is driving the blood out of the ventricles and into your arterial circulation and out to your organs that need to be perfused with this oxygenated blood, all right? So keep that in mind that as the as the chambers squeeze, their volume goes down and their pressure rises. And that drives and that will create the flow of blood out of the heart. And then as the chambers relax, the volume increases and the pressure decreases, and that allows the and that, that will allow the chambers to refill with blood. Okay? So that's basically the, the, the quick little blurb I wanted to give on pressures and volumes. Now let's kind of discuss the different phases of the cardiac cycle.